What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Anime Princess, and I wanted to leave you guys with one last video before League launch to help prep for the Widow Hill Spark League start. This is going to be a series of five tips, mostly aimed at beginners, on how to have success at the start of the league. So the first one is for very new players, and it's how to color your sockets correctly. Every base is going to have a certain bias towards specific colors. Energy Shield biases blue, Evasion biases green, and armor biases red. So if we wanted to have four red sockets, it would be almost impossible to do it with chromatic orbs. The way we would accomplish this would be using something called the jeweler method, where you use the crafting bench to use, you spend jewelers instead of chromatic orbs to color it. So first, let, let's just say we wanted four red. We'd go down to two sockets, and now you can do you can just buy red sockets for 25 chromatic orbs and these are locked in. So the trick is to go up to three and back down to two, which costs jewelers. And you will never lose the previous sockets. And you just keep doing this. And eventually when this is a uh, red, you would go three to four. And then if it was a body armor, you could go four to five and five to six. But you see there is an issue where it's very cheap up to four sockets and then it becomes expensive for five sockets and six sockets so let's go into a more advanced technique for getting off colors on a six link such as our final body armor which is lightning coil lightning coil is armor evasion which means it heavily biases against blue sockets however our six link is six blue so how are we going to get six off colors we're definitely not going to want to do it this way we're going to go for six white instead of six blue. White sockets can hold any gem color, so they're more flexible anyways, and it's also a very easy process. So in order to get six white sockets, we are going to be farming Alva. It's part of my league start strategy. You can go to the Widow Hill Spark playlist, fast Atlas progression. It does involve a tree that specs into Alva. With Alva, every three maps, you're going to get a Chronicle of Axolotl. And we're going to be aiming to get Lotus or Locus of Corruption. And the way you get that is a progression from Corruption Chamber upgraded into Catalyst of Corruption upgraded into Locus of Corruption. And what this does is it lets you double corrupt an item. There are four outcomes to double corrupting an item. It can either be completely destroyed. It can be turned into a rare with random stats, which is bad. And the two good ones are you get two corrupted implicits or you get full sockets are white which means before we double corrupt our lightning coils and widow hails, we are gonna want to six socket them, which you can do on the bench for 350 jewelers, or you can simply just spam jewelers. I would just click jewelers on them. Just make sure you have them set to 20% quality first because that will make you spend less jewelers on average. All right, so the way this works is you're going to take your six socket unique and you're going to run up to the corruption chamber and they're just going to be a little tool you click on the item. If it does turn into six white, you're going to want to visit the crafting bench and you can four link it for five fusings as well as five vol orbs because corrupted items also cost equivalent vol orbs to link. And then you're going to want to use Tainted Orb of Fusings to six link the item, which is a pretty standard way of doing this anyways. So it'll take roughly eight on average because you need to win a 50-50 to go from four to five and another one from five to six. And if you get unlucky and it goes down to a three link, you do not keep spamming Tainted Orb of Fusings. You go back to the bench and you four link it again. The double corruption results from the temple can also be very powerful as well as lucrative. So let's go over these while we're on the topic. For the body armor, we have increased damage, which is pretty good. Maximum energy shield's okay. Maximum life is okay. All of this reduced damage taken is okay. Then we have plus two levels to specific gem types. And to know which one of these are powerful for us, we need to look at the gem tags. So for Spark, we care mostly for the Spark skill gem, not so much the supports. So the Spark skill gem is tagged with projectile and duration. So plus two projectile, plus two duration, as well as plus one to all gems are gonna be very powerful for Spark in the body armor. 
for the Arknis brand setup. Arknis brand level doesn't matter too much. We care more about the curses. So that would be AOE duration curse. And we have all of those. So depending what you hit, you could choose to either put your spark in your widow hail or your spark in your body armor. And then past all these levels, you have plus one to max res, which is really good and reduced extra damage from crits, which is also very good. If you do hit a good double corruption on the body armor, you're not going to have the six white sockets, which means you're going to have to color the body armor using tainted chromatic orbs. And it might be hard to hit six blue. However, do keep in mind, you do not need to use the recommended six blue supports. If you have a red socket, you could use cruelty support. If you have green sockets, hypothermia is very powerful and pierce is pretty good as well. Moving on to the widow hail double corruptions. So the best ones, in my opinion, are level 10 faster projectiles, level 10 blind, and you would need to have your spark in the bow in this case. For some double corruptions that are good, where it doesn't matter what's in the bow, you could get any of the flat LE damage. And also, chance to gain frenzy charge on kill is pretty good. It doesn't matter what six link is in your bow for that. So those are the options. I'd say the body armor is going to be more powerful than the bow in terms of double corruptions, but there is quite a bit of power in both. Now, if you do hit some double corruptions that aren't good for either the Arcanus brand setup or the Spark setup, you could still sell the Lightning Coil on the market for potentially a pretty good profit because Lightning Coil is a very meta body armor and people are going to want to be looking for double corruptions for their specific build. Moving on to tip three, go with conservative content for the first few days because Spark really ramps. Yeah, Spark does much better even with small amounts of investment. So if you go with my suggestions, which obviously is what I recommend, on your league start, you are going to be stopping at level 60. You're going to go to Heist and you're going to farm Chaos Recipe for a little while just to buy a few items. I will be doing this live on stream tomorrow. And I do recommend going to the Widow Hill Spark playlist, looking at the actual run so you can see just briefly how I do the Chaos Orb farming. I do use a tool and it's linked in the video description. I also have my own filter on Filter Blade, which you can just grab off of, uh, you can just subscribe to it. And it's AP leveling Spark Templar. It will have everything you need built in. Now, past the campaign, when you have done a little bit of Chaos Recipe, I would recommend going with this fast Atlas progression lead start tree. Now, why should you do this? Well, this gives you character power. So in those first couple days, when you just have no gear, you're just at your weakest point, it's going to make you stronger. This tree does not make enemies any stronger. So it's going to be a very comfortable League Star strat. It specs into Alva, which is nice because realistically, you're not going to be aiming for that Lightning Coil early. It's your final armor, but it's nice to just farm up your Alvas, farm up your double corruptions. You might as well do it right from the start. And then once you do have the, uh, the currency and the progression to switch over to Lightning Coil, you can just start double corrupting them right away. And then finally, this tree does end up in Toxic Sewer, which is probably the best layout for Spark, especially on low budgets, farming Blight, which again is very easy and pretty profitable. So this is a very conservative, safe way to start the league, whereas you can move on to more difficult content in your second Atlas and your third Atlas tree. That would be my suggestion for a very safe way to league start Spark. Now, Tip number four, energy shield body armor for your first six link. You are not going to start with a unique lightning coil. This isn't even in consideration for quite a while. I would recommend buying a six link that gives you energy shield because as you notice, our energy shield is our mana. So we do need to have enough simply to get our free wrath aura. As you can see, this costs me a little bit. Um, now, in the later stages of the game, Lightning Coil gives no energy shield. I still have a ton of it, so it's not really a big concern, but just like right at the beginning when you probably don't have very much, 
you might as well get the energy shield base. Also, energy shield bases will very easily hold blue sockets, which is what we want anyways. So this just makes first few days very, very simple. Final tip, spend your money as you get it. Do not hoard divines or currency. Spark is a build that, as I've said, ramps very well with investment. So you do not want to play it greedy and like do little small investments early in like saving divine orbs or whatever for in the future. You want to invest in your character because character power will let you do harder content, which will let you progress faster. Now, if you do have a lot of currency and you want to use it to invest, I personally would invest in gear that you know will appreciate. So some examples would be Forbidden Flame and Flesh. Those generally are pretty cheap in week one and two, and then they can just skyrocket in price. So think of your investments as investments that you can put on your character to help uh, propel yourself forward in terms of character power if you do have a lot of money and if you're just a regular player playing through the game you know just spend your money keep following the progression try and get to what we have here which is the final path of building for a league start keep in mind this isn't the final stage of progression for widow hell this is just the like league start attainable progression and i will still keep releasing content to push this quite a bit further because in my opinion this is still pretty budget and we can definitely do a lot better than the final tree of the league start guide if we want to push this further all right hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys think i missed any big tips please leave them in the comments below i'm sure they'll benefit lots of people i'll greatly appreciate it looking forward to seeing you guys live on twitch tomorrow for the league start peace